So now what I want to do is I want to set up the logic behind the fully restrained section. And again, we're going to do this from first principles because it really will help us in understanding part B. So we're going to use a, a force method uh, of analysis using superposition, uh, a primary and a redundant structure in order to understand the loads caused or the reaction forces caused in our fully restrained rod under a thermal change. I'm going to fill out my free body diagram. Now in this case we will get reaction forces so I'm going to put those in here and I'll just label them as P and they're going to be equal and opposite and because this is a negative temperature change it's going to try to shrink as we know so those will go into tension so I will draw them as tension and I'm going to label our displacement here we know because it's fully restrained has to be equal to zero now I've already labeled my primary and redundant structures on the primary structure what I'm going to impose is my delta T I'm going to leave it fully unrestrained so that will allow it to deflect and it will have a displacement in here we'll call that delta prime and we know that that's going to be equal to alpha delta T multiplied by L on the redundant structure in this case we're going to superimpose our reaction forces so we'll put in our P's we won't superimpose the delta T if we use our method of sections we'll know that our internal force throughout uh, the rod is P in tension and that will cause a displacement at the end call that delta double prime equal to P L over E a. Now, the one thing about the superposition method is we know that this system has to equal the sum of these other two systems for it to work. And if we look at it, we can go up, we can see that there's a P here, plus no P there equals P. Same for the other end. Uh, there's a P internal, there's a delta T. So we can see that this section has delta T. And so from this we get our compatibility equation, which is basically to say that delta prime plus delta double prime has to be equal to zero. And that compatibility equation is the equation that we need in order to solve our statically indeterminate problem. So I'm going to go over here, and we're still in part A. I'm going to go part two of part A, and this is going to be fully restrained. And now I'm basically going to apply my compatibility equation. So we know that delta prime plus delta double prime has to be equal to zero. I can fill those in from my two equations. So we have alpha delta T L plus P L over E A equals zero. And that can be rearranged such that we get P is equal to the negative E A over L multiplied by our thermal displacement. And if I go ahead and substitute in our numbers, we have 200,000 megapascals for a steel rod. Its area was given in the question is 1200 millimeters squared. Length of 2500 millimeters. And we already know that alpha delta T L is equal to negative 1.17 millimeters from part one. Or you could substitute the individual components back in and it would come out with the same answer. And that allows us to derive that the reaction force in the fully restrained system is equal to 112, 320 newtons or 112.3 kilonewtons. Now having worked through it, rather than just putting the equation that we know for the load in a fully restrained system down and working it out from first principles, now we should be in a good situation to apply the same logic to our partially restrained system and hopefully be able to solve it right out.